Hello this afternoon, my brothers and sisters in Christ. I just trimmed my doggy's hair. I still feel like it's on me. <laughs> oh, I have been brushing, get, trying to get all his little hairs off because it was getting so long around his ears. I thought, I better give this poor dog a trim, even though cold weather is coming on. Uh-oh, what is that coming up? We don't need anything blocking anything we don't want blocked. I have to share this letter from newsletter, prophecy letter, words from the Lord letter, whatever we want to title it, letter from Dawn. Okay, because it's going to encourage somebody out there. I know it is. And I don't know if any of you, probably many of you, follow Genevieve Brazil. See, I lost track of her after, I don't know, maybe it was after the July 17th thing that never came to pass in 2019 you know and but last year i was looking for july 17th and this year i was looking toward july 17th and then i thought well maybe it is just 717 and today is 717 on the hebrew calendar well anyway the point is i kind of stopped following everybody that was talking about july 17th but uh she might not have been one of them, but for some reason or other, I lost track of her. Anyway, in this letter, she must have sent these things. There's several small, short things she's received lately in October. And I've got to share that. And then uh, the last message will greatly encourage the person that said they're ready to give up. And how many of you can say sometimes, many times during the day? You don't really feel like rejoicing? I know I'm not the only one. We have to make ourselves. The Lord is saying so. All right, let me get started now. Today is November the 6th. It's uh, 4.50. 4.50 in the afternoon. And that sunshine's coming through my window so bright, but I got the blinds pulled down where it doesn't wash me out. So let's, let me get started here reading this. First one is Small Straws in a Soft Wind by Marsha Burns. Now, first I started reading this, and I, st I know I was taking it wrong, and I had to go back and reread it. Now I understand what it means. Let me read it. Refuse to dwell on what might happen in the future. Whatever you envision it, whatever you envision it to be is only fantasy and not reality. What you need to do is make the best of today and do what you can do now. Your obsession will only create anxiety. This is for somebody, probably several somebodies. Trust me to be with you in every circumstance and do not be afraid. Not everybody goes in the first truths departure rapture leaving to go outside of time and then coming back however you want to word it and many will have to face the, the appearing of the antichrist the announcement that this former president is going to be ruling the probably president of the UN is what I imagine but at any rate he will be the leader of the new world order which they are already talking about and spouting New World Order in lots of places and ways, not keeping it a secret. Oh, no, George Bush talked about it years ago. The senior George Bush. All right, the scripture put with this is Jeremiah 29, 11, and 12. For I know the plans that I have toward you, says the Lord, plans of peace and not of evil, to give you future and an expectation then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you okay I started to say I interrupted myself again when that happens when the bride of Christ is gone the Antichrist comes into power everyone will have to have the mark of the beast in order to buy and sell that means work Sell your time, your talent, your education and experience for a paycheck. Your, the economy will collapse. It will be scary. But that is when you have to fully, 
fully commit unto the Lord. This, this is probably only for maybe some new people that are new to my channel that don't know anything about the first fruits. You haven't heard anything from the Lord that you're part of it. It isn't too late to be part of it. It's what I keep being told. Anybody who has cleansed and purified themselves, gotten, sought deliverance, all people have demons. You don't want to hear it. I know, I know, I didn't either. I didn't believe it either. I've gotten rid of so many demons, it's not funny. And it's why I ended up getting lied to till I got rid of each and every one of them. And this year, or was it last year? Maybe it was last year. A whole, a whole like a dozen of them through Grafted in Team Jesus. Yep, that's their main mission is to get people delivered and ready for the first fruits departure. All right, now I'm going to read to you encouraging words from the Lord. So he is saying, do not be afraid. Keep your eyes on me. Trust in me. That's what he's saying. I'll put these, I will put this in the description box if it will fit. If I have to, I'll take out the scriptures and just leave the references. That's what I do. If it doesn't, I'll fit. This was re things received, encouraging words from the Lord, from September 30th, 2021 to October 28th, 2021. And then she adds 1030, maybe she dated it 1031 when she compiled it all and submitted it to Dawn. I don't know. It's she, Her name's here, Genevieve Brazell. All right. Recently, the Lord brought this to my attention. On October 1, Joe Biden said, if, quote, she's quoting him, if it takes six minutes, six days, or six weeks, we'll get it done, unquote. When I watched that video, right away the Lord told me to search when that lands. I also felt an imprint on my heart from the Lord that it lands on a blood moon. From October 1 to November 19th, 2021. If someone just put that in my comments, that it was November 19th to the 20th is what we're looking for. I didn't know about this. I'm just now reading. I just now read this. I'm just now sharing it with you. All right. So from October 1 to November 19, 2021 is the time it takes to get there. When you add up six minutes, six days, or six weeks from the time she got this, okay? That just happens to fall on a blood moon, which could only be a revelation from the Lord. It's a partial, prenumbral, I think they call it. I watched a video that someone sent me from Steve Fletcher showing it. Okay, y'all, I'm a flat earther. I can't help it. I prayed and prayed and prayed about it. The Lord told, I prayed, Lord, one more time. I said, Lord, you know, because I watched yet another video, because I was kind of like, I don't believe this, but I was intr intrigued that why did they just start teaching the globe spins in the 1800s? Making teachers tell that. So I had my doubts and he told me this is what I heard in my spirit go back to the beginning and so I started well back to the beginning I guess okay I'll start at the beginning of the scriptures start reading Genesis the creation talking about the firmament separating the waters from the water so I'm not saying there are no such thing we know there's eclipses because we see them People record them. I've seen the videos of them. I just don't know how to reconcile it in my heart or in my brain, put it that way. So I know these things happen. Okay, I'm probably rambling now. Let me move on. So anyway, it's it's a partial blood moon. And she said, uh, that just happens to fall on a blood moon, which could only be a revelation from the Lord. Surely he makes these things happen, is what I'm saying. So I felt impressed last night to share it with a couple of other brothers. 
they have now shared it on their channels. So maybe she doesn't have a channel anymore. I don't know. He also gave me some other encouraging words about our departure. On October 28th, 6.32 a.m., the Lord spoke to me. He said, I'm getting ready to take you home. That was just last week, y'all. The 28th, 29th, 30th, 31st. That's three days of October and six. That's nine days ago. All right. Shortly afterwards, he said, that mountain on fire. I knew that he was speaking about the volcano, you know, La Palma, Canary Islands. But he spoke into my spirit, that mountain on fire. So I asked him, Lord, what about the mountain on fire? And then he spoke very clearly to me. That is the fiery kickoff event. Kathy's been talking about the fiery kickoff event. I guess because she... People send them far more than I get, okay? And they have a website where they've got a, a section just for prophecy. You know, dreams, words, and visions. If you ever want to check it out, it's teamjesus222.com. Just simply teamjesus222.com. You look over on the left, uh, you'll, you'll see a list. And there's a section for the bride and 144,000. You can click on that and see a different dreams and visions or messages that talk about that. And then there's a section that has prophecy, dreams and visions. Okay. On October 27th, oh, wait a minute. So she was talking about the fiery kickoff event, off event. So she asked him to elaborate. He said he had already told many others about the fiery kickoff event that would precede, precede the rapture of the church. Now we know, we know the bride goes first. Many in the church, they've already been separated. The wheat and the tares are being separated. Hopefully no more will take it, but many have, thanks to their pastors misleading them. And they didn't have, they weren't filled with the Holy Spirit, so when they prayed about it, they didn't hear. They didn't hear correctly. Let me move on. On October 20, anyway, I started to say a whole lot of the church is still lukewarm. They haven't taken it. They refused it, but they don't believe it is what it is. So we have to be praying for those people to wake up and realize exactly what it is. All right. Those are the people that will be left behind because they're not... They're not seeking the Lord with all, they're not loving God with all their heart, mind, soul, and strength. They're still in the world. They don't want something that in their body that they don't want. They don't want to be forced to be taking it. But what happens when the Antichrist takes over and you have to have it to buy and sell? Will they cave? That's why we gotta go outside of time and come back and hurry up and save them. Get them saved proper. Filled with the Holy Spirit. Ready to be strong and trusting in the Lord completely. Alright. On October 27 at 1.54 p.m. He gave me the word that, quote, The lights are about to go out, unquote. When the Lord gives you a message, He usually gives you the revelation about the word He's given you. The revelation I got was that we, as His bride... See, she realizes there's a bride, but I think she believes the whole bride is the whole church. The bride are those who are ready. We're holy and sanctified, not by perfection of our own, because we repent and ask forgiveness when we mess up, which for me is daily. I don't know about you, but I do something I know displeases the Lord every day. I complain or I get angry. Or I lose my temper. Well, I guess that's getting angry. Uh, 
say something a little too harshly to somebody around here because they're so mean sometimes or they're nice but it's like back up back up put your mask on put your mask on back up you need to keep your social distancing you know why they know I'm not I get mad sometimes a few times I have I try to avoid them as much as I can all right let me back back to this the revelation I got was that we as his bride are the lights in this dark world and clearly when he rescues us the lights are going to go out and darkness is going to fall on the whole earth that's exactly right the bride is the Holy Spirit filled Christians that are sanctified by the blood of the lamb and ready to go we're repenting we're living for him first the others in our life are second Yes, you have to take care of your husband and your children. Or if you're a man, you have to take care of your wife and your kids. If you have them. But you love Jesus most. All right. Then he spoke right after and said, Wonderful things await you. This is for the whole body, not just me. Well, that's her understanding. This message, yes, the whole church, those when the multitude too large to number gets raptured at the sixth seal after the great earthquake, the dead in Christ will rise, and those who are alive and have survived or remain will meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall all be with the Lord. Yes, that's when the rest of the church goes, which is a way bigger number than us, which is why John saw it as a multitude too large to number. Praise the Lord. There's that many that are still savable, right? I don't know where they are, but they're out there. I don't think they live in the big cities. Then he spoke right after. and Okay, wonderful things await you. We have to occupy and be obedient until he comes. Be ready for him. That's another word right there. Obedient. When I was... Before I was fully committed, I was not obedient. Not like I should have been. On October 26 at 11.25 a.m., he spoke this to me. Quote, Song of Ascent. This is where you are at. You are about to have dinner with the king. I am at the door. I have your dancing shoes ready for you. There's no more time left, unquote. Well, uh, still the 26th was only not quite two weeks ago. Not even a full two weeks ago. All right. On October 18th at 11.17 p.m., he said to me, There is a sea of glass, my darling. Very soon you will be standing on that sea of glass, unquote. On October 17th at 5.34 a.m., he spoke to me and woke me up. Quote, the volcanic, volcanic eruption will carry you home. Unquote. He prompted me to look at the time because frequently there is meaning from the Strong's Concordance behind the time. Since it was so early, I started to fall back asleep, but he told me again, the volcanic eruption will carry you home and told me he wanted me to write it down. So when I was fully awake, I looked up 534 and it meant top or summit. We'll reach the top or the summit of Mount Zion. Not the one in Jerusalem, the one in heaven. The one where we're going to get our instructions before we come back. When I was sharing with Sis Audrey, I don't know if this is my Audrey, or Audrey uh, subscribed to me, or a different Audrey, but she shared this with Sister Audrey about the fiery kickoff event and the other previous words. Then she confirmed about the words because she said the Holy Spirit was all over her 
and the ground under her house shook at 441. 441 means truth. I love it. On September 30th, I was sitting on my bed, and my eye happened to catch my daughter's art book, and he impressed me to look at page 3. When I turned to that page, my daughter had drawn a picture of a volcano. He was confirming that the volcano eruption will carry you home. I didn't know which volcano he is referring to, but he has been giving me words that are all related to the fiery kickoff event and volcanoes. There are no coincidences with the Lord. He is coming soon to get us. Praise the Lord. And she put Psalm 2. I love Psalm 2. And Romans 8, 11 through 39. That's for you to look up. Psalm 2 and Romans 8, 11 through 39. Now, this next one's very short. It was given to Bev Robinson. This is for somebody. Be on the lookout. I am sending you someone whose conversation will stimulate you in my ways and actions. You have known them for a long time. It will be a refreshing time. Write down some things you hear so you will not forget what is said. I am good to give you what you need when you need it. I have to change position. I can only put my feet up on that ottoman so long. It's a little tiny bit too high. Okay. I am a good father. Keep in step with me. I will show you before it happens. <sighs> the scripture put with this is James 1, 17 from the NASB. Every good thing given and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shifting shadow. I love that scripture. Lastly, November 6, 2021. I say again, rejoice. I hear you saying right now, but I don't feel like rejoicing. And there it is. Rejoice when you don't feel like it. This will break the stronghold of depression and discouragement trying to settle in on you. Find something about which you can rejoice. You are breathing. You are living. You are here. Live in the present and not in the past. Rejoice. For I have made joy in this day. The scripture put with this is Philippians 4, verse 4 from the NASB 1995 version. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. And that was given to Robin Robinson Bolin. And that's the end of this newsletter. So I'm going to pull up my camera and say I plead the blood of Jesus over this. I'm sorry I rambled a little bit in between. I, I guess the whole thing as a whole is really very exciting and encouraging. And I wanted to encourage you to. And also teach a little. Because I don't really think Genevieve understands that this is not the multitude. Which is the rest of the church but is indeed the rapture of the bride that we're looking for. So I plead the blood of Jesus over each and every single one of us and all our devices and our internet connections. And with that, I'm going to say bye for now. I'll talk to you again later.